everyone, welcome everyone here for another episode of a Dropping with Pindi podcast. Today I have the one and only, the UK's number one, Mr. Joe Craven in the house. Sutton. Yes, yes, thank you so much for coming down all this way, all the way from Halifax, which was like a nice two and a half hour Two drive. and a half, too long. <laughs> there you go. And it's good to have you down. I've been meaning to obviously get Joe down for a while, because... Um, but your schedule's been insane this this year. It's been busy, like busy, camp after camp, and I didn't want to didn't want to obviously go into it during your last camp because you were so fixated on obviously the fight, yeah. then the pullouts, and then everything else going on. But let's get stuck straight into it, man. Fight of the year, fight of the year. That was insane. We're nuts. <laughs> Are you recovered? It was ridiculous. <laughs> I when you got when you got hit in that body. And you were down. What was what was going on, man, in your head? What like because you the breathing, everything. Oh, it was awful. <laughs> I've never been hit with body shot. I've never ever been dropped with body shot. So like that was not even inspiring and no, all. That was the first time ever. To be honest, I actually think I probably refueled a bit too much. Oh, so, okay. So I don't know whether I ate too close to fight or whatever. Because I remember just before I went out, I said yeah. to Badger, "Well, like my abs feel like they're hurting." He went, "Nah, it'll be adrenaline." Went right. It was just like a top row of abs. Yeah. And anyway, like it, a stretch. Yeah, like, okay. <laughs> it yeah. were adrenaline. Yeah. It need me. And it, oh my god! I felt my soul had left my body. But it's one of them. Like obviously, I got a bit of a bollock when I went back to corner. And luckily, it happened at end of round. So and he had a bit. Got a little there. bit of a rest, and then also he asked for two minute rests as well before that. Like, don't know why. So it suited me to an absolute T. So he helped her out. But, yeah, exactly. So, but obviously going into it then, just had to go get job done. Because when we were getting dropped round one, round two, you knew I needed a knockout. Yeah. So there's no swinging dinner no, yeah. like <laughs> outside Dixie Chicken. No, but watching it and the the energy, the atmosphere was just insane. It's like. It goes to show your determination. It goes to show you how how bad you wanted it. Does that yeah, make sense? Like a lot of people, a lot of people. Obviously, crumbled. I had a big, I had a, a very hard fight camp. Yeah, a lot of stuff went on like away from fighting and stuff like that. Yeah, and I remember it was weird. Like obviously, when we get in, it's at body. I could still think straight, but while I was like on my on the deck, all I had going through my head was. Certain people want me to lose today, blah, blah, blah. Like, I thought, now nah, I'm getting up. Yeah. It was so, so weird. And then, obviously, with the amount of fans I brought and stuff like that, like, the two year old kids inside that ring shouting at me. I thought, no, nah, I better get up here. Yeah. They killed me. There you go. Honestly, everyone's rooting for you. And I know what you mean about by your camp because I came to see you. We obviously I brought Josh down yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. to Badco a few times, obviously, before the, before the fight itself, just to obviously get him a few rounds in as well. Um, and you, you, when you said, first of all, you had your pullout, first of all, yeah, obviously lit in the same week as your pullout, you had everything else that went through it. And again, people that are treating this as a, as, as a, as a hobby as such, shall we say, they would have, they would have crumbled a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, of course they would. Do you know what I mean? They would have backed out a long time ago, from, just from, straight from the pullout, mm. they wouldn't have accepted it. Do you know what I mean? And just, yeah, just talk through like. I know how determined you are, because I've 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 known you a long time. But obviously, for the people that are listening to this, that are watch you watching your blogs that you've been doing recently yeah. with the with your episodes that you've been that everyone's been watching, but seeing you from behind the scenes even further back, obviously what the blogs may not have shown as well, like talks through all of that everything that went on. Look, it and, was a bit of a weird one. Like a lot of stuff happened personally, mm. and then my grandma got diagnosed with cancer, and then. Literally, a matter of a week later, well, the same week my grandma then got rushed to hospital. She's fine now, though, so we're chilling. Oh, good, good. Yeah, she's all right that, That's good to hear. Um, and then a matter of days later, then they pull out. So I'm like, oh, my God, you're joking. So I'm thinking, like, I remember coming into the gym and I'm thinking, I'm, I'm not even going to have a training partner. I'm not even going to have a fight here. Yeah. I was running and I was just getting myself worked up. I thought, this is doing my head in. And then I got back to the gym for sparring. And everything went out window. No guard. I was just my hands were down. I was swinging like mad. Um, anyway, I ended up freaking jumping in my car, and I woke up, I was like burst into tears. I had to ring my mind coach. Like, oh, it were, oh, it were awful. Um, but obviously, then I got matched and stuff. But it, it was weird with everything going on el elsewhere. elsewhere. 
I was kind of using the training as like my, my getaway. Yeah. As such, because obviously it's all I've ever known. I've, I've trained since I was four year old, so it's all I've ever known as such. So that's yeah. kind of like my my getaway from everything else. So I, it would, I would probably overdrain at times. Um, and then when I got rematched and stuff like that, total opposite sort of fight. I've gone from Magnus, who's known as like a come forward, yeah. orthodox, aggressive, to then Carlos De Celis, who's like a southpaw, southpaw, tricky, put me on my ass in about f- five <laughs> seconds. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was just, it, like I say, it was just a total different change. But obviously, th- that's all I was training for, especially yeah. coming off a loss as well. It was like, I, I was so focused and I, wa- I, wa- I just wanted to get back into winning circle. Yeah. So, yeah, it was a bit of a tough camp, but it probably helped as well. I was just about to touch on that. I was literally just about to say that because everything that you just explained to me now, even now, just literally before we started, I, I didn't even know about your dog the day before your fight. Do you get what I mean? Like, literally fuck me, you got, I'll, hit, I'll you, got hit with, you got hit with, you got hit with, everything before this fight it literally awful, everything man. and respect to you for coming out and the way you've done it and the way you've just shown the world do you know what i mean of what you're made of uh, they knew anyway but this just proves mentally yeah. how fucking strong yeah, you yeah, are yeah, do you yeah. get what i mean because i always say about i've said it in previous podcasts uh, and and for the listeners out there that normally listen to this as well i always say that for me training is fucking medicine do you yeah, know what i mean it's, it's, it's the savior yeah, yeah. it saved my life many times and your your living proof right now because I was just explaining that you see all these people out of not involved in Thai boxing or any of the combat sport and they get they get they'll get probably diagnosed with antidepressants. Oh, sure. they'll get given X, Y, and Z. Especially and, with all that sort of stuff going on, it all you, builds up. It's yeah, hundred percent. And like I know, I know. I was, I was talking to someone about it as well, like like men's mental health. And you just touched on it there where you jumped in your car and you just burst out and you had to speak to obviously your coaches. So, do you know what I mean? And a lot of guys out there won't talk about it and they'll just stay shush about it and they'll let it boil, build, build, build until it's, until it's next bird. But this is why I always stress upon it's so important. You don't have to be a fighter, but just fucking get onto the mats and fucking yeah, hit some pads. Just let some it out. Does that make sense? Because that is the biggest savior out there. So it doesn't matter if you're 21 stone, fat obese, just get yourselves on the mats and start doing something productive because yeah. it's going to save your life. Do you know what I mean? Plus, this, the social side to it, you meet pals. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Or you're going out and stuff like that. Like, all my best mates are from Thai boxing. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's, it's, a, it's a weird one, but yeah, I, I couldn't say all else apart from. 100%. Uh, it, honestly, because. All your camps have always gone smooth, uh, ish, 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 despite injuries, but smooth ish. But this one was like you got hit with everything in terms of your personal life, with your relationship, with your with your family, with your dog, with everything, with oh, opponents with pulling out, with little niggly niggle injuries, which mm. which we get in every camp. But anyone out there that hasn't already seen your blog, your your blogs that you were doing for this camp, check it out as well. Um, okay. Honestly, because that is. Ins- is great to watch um, and it's great to be part of a little little part of it as well and seeing obviously and then seeing the outcome and and the end do you know what it was weird one with that because i've never yeah. done all like that mate so it's it fucking like, sick one of the lads ben yeah ben robinson was doing all my videoing he was like well i don't want to make like a bit of a mini documentary as such and at first when camera's there i'm like oh god this is all good oh crumbling it were horrendous because like I'm one of them, mate. I watch it on YouTube and stuff, but it's like, I see that and I'm like, I don't know if that's a, that's a bit of me, that or like, oh, I don't know. Um, but I've had, to be fair, I've had some good feedback from mate, it. Mate, it's awesome. I it's loved weird. it. Do you know what I mean? I yeah. loved watching it. Like, it was, it was good. I think you need to do more. Like, that's do you know what I mean? Like, that's the like going forward. obviously you got, you're surrounded with great, great fighters, great people around you at, at Badco. And obviously the likes of, for example, Liam, who's, who, Look! Look what he's, he's doing, and he's constantly blogging. Sport, constantly, yeah. yeah, he's constantly blogging, constantly doing his thing, which is great. And it's 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 important that you do it as well, mm-hmm. man. Do more of it because I think that everyone wants to see it. Everyone wants to see behind the scenes. I think more. the social side of it as well it gets more eyes to the sport. Yeah, and then obviously a fighter don't pay that much, so you need your sponsors, stuff like that, and it just tra- attracts more sponsors. Hundred percent more promoters, gets you fighting elsewhere, and I think. Eventually, in, in in the like the bigger picture, that's when the money will start coming to the sport if people yeah. get more eyes on the sport. 
you know definitely, I mean? definitely. Well, linked off this, linked from this fight, and probably your your Tyson Fury comeback moment, <laughs> uh, which is which is insane. Um, you're now obviously getting lined up for what is expected to be one hell of a fight at Coleman, yeah, November eighteenth of with with Wakelin, man. So how you how you how's everything preparing for that? Obviously, you're not in camp for that no, yet. I'm not so really you've in got camp for such no. yet, but I mean, I'm always in the gym. I'm always you live in the there, gym, literally. You know, exactly. But it's it's a fight what gets you out of bed, you know what I mean? It's sometimes when you have fights where you're like especially when you're expected to win, it's it's hard to motivate yourself as such. Yeah. But working he's like he's a he's a pioneer as sport, you know what I mean? Like when I was coming up as a kid and stuff like that, he was top boy. Yeah. So you know what I mean? So it's 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 an exciting one for me. Obviously it's just come off a win to win ISK world title as well, so even more excitement. Exactly. Is that like, I've got my UK in one spot. He's got his ISK world title, so they're both on You're both fighting for... Exactly. So yeah. Something to work up for. Plus Definitely. it's a London or two, main event, so chilling. It's going to be great, man. It's going to be, be a good, good night. When, when, so what's what's going to be... When's camp for that starting for you? October? I don't know. It's, it's a weird... I don't really have... You don't have... Set... I mean, I'm always training. Yeah. But I'll start ramping it up. Like a lot closer to fight, as in, I'll start dieting probably like next week, week after. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. start cleaning up because I don't really want to be. I don't well, want to on weight camp. I've, I've had yeah. it before where it it, just, it became a fat camp instead of a fight camp. Yeah, I, I, I remember those days, and I I, I had a I had Peter here um, oh, do yeah, a podcast. Know. Yeah, and he, I was we had a we had a really big discussion about about this because obviously when I was growing up in the sport. That's what it was. It was like you fu- you you went into camp, lost all the weight, make a fucking disgusting well, weight. Bothered, that's all we were bothered about making. We weren't we yeah. bothered about the fight. Yeah, we weren't, we weren't working on strategies or or game plans or anything like that. It's just make the weight, go out there, do your thing. As soon as the fight is done, get on piss. That was do scandal, you, mate. Do you get me? <laughs> <laughs> as soon as the fight's done, as soon as Wayne's done, yeah. I used to go like Mackies and stuff like that. I didn't know no, about it. Yeah, no one knew. I, I remember me and you were on the same sort of show. I was yeah. like 15, stuff like that. I remember me and you fought in Yorkow. Yeah. I weighed in. I weighed in at 62. Straight to Mackies. I made myself spew because Shit. I'd eaten too much. Fucking hell. I was scandal. I had no idea what I would have win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No fucking that's I insane. just thought if I made weight, chilling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I used to think pizza were a good like refuel sort yeah. of food. I had a bit of sauce in it, a bit of chicken, a bit of carbs. I thought, oh, it sound that. Pizza. Come what on. What a clown, man. <laughs> Puke up after straight away. Mate, that's I used to do that since I was a kid. Like, realistically, I've probably been making weight since I was a kid. Yeah. Like, I know, I know. You wouldn't ever promote kids to make weight as such, but that's what it was. That's what it was. You know what I mean? Like we, we, no one knew back then. Nah, it's like I was, I was saying to um, I had I had a uh, Dan McGowan, <laughs> Dan McGowan. Is that like there's? I remember when he was growing up as a kid. I think he was like twelve or something, and we had to lie. Like I remember having to lie to say that he was fifteen, sixteen, so he can get. Some yeah, that's do you got me? Right. And it's, it's, weird. It's, it's the stuff that you had to do back then. It was weird. The sport, the sport was a lot different. Like now, you won't be able to fight a hair class at like fifteen or nah. stuff like that. It's crazy. But back then, we so got when away when did your it. mindset? When did it shift for you? When did you get that little wake up call to say, "Nah, this was fucking up"? Because obviously, there's there's Yokao shows when it, when you were fighting on them. They were big the shows. The ones where I was knocking up on my weight. The one with like my wake up call when I fought Jake Birder. I'd been to Thailand with lads, um, and I won't lie, I just didn't train. It, to be honest, it was ridiculous. We went to Thailand, we were getting pissed before training, and going sparring, Fucking stuff man. like that. Then we'd be down Bangla Road. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It worked fight camp as such. It was there were me, Liam, George, <laughs> and one of his other pals, Fraser. But yeah. I was the only one who was fighting on the show, and I was acting an absolute idiot. Oh. What we all was, but. Obviously, I had this fight. Yeah, the fight. Um, so, yeah, I was just getting pissed and stuff like that. And then I actually made weight and, again, refueled, but not knowing what we're doing. I woke up next day, my eyes, I couldn't open my eyes like this. Wow. And it was weird. My face had blown up. My mum thought I had an allergic reaction. So yeah. I was having a load of antihistamines. But obviously, they make sleeper. Yeah. So then I was having a load of Pro Plus to wake me up. Jesus. But my worst fight in history. We were fighting. The first three rounds, we were cruising. 
<laughs> and then I crashed. I came back to Connor because it's where on here. Yeah, good. came back to Connor. I went, Richard, I'm fucked. <laughs> went, I'm absolutely fucked. And he went, No, you're winning. I went, no, I'm fucked. And then round four happened. Um, he threw me round like an empty track suit. So it was absolutely horrendous. It it was a good job that he were horrendous as well because yeah. it was the worst fight in history. I got away. I got I got away with it and won. But yeah, that was like my wake up calls thing. Like I'm, you can't, can't keep doing can't this. keep doing this. How long ago was that? Eighteen, I was so six, seven, like seven years ago. Seven years. Six, seven years ago. Fucking. And then that's it. Was weird. That's when I obviously like, oh, what you came number one then. Mm. You came number one versus you came number one, n- number two. And it was probably the worst fight in history. And you, <sighs> oh, it was horrendous. And, and, and your worst, one of your worst. Pro- pro- yeah, it was horrendous. Fucking hell. But like I said, I just blame it to me being stupid and not knowing anything. You know what I mean? Learn. I've been obviously. I've Done it since I was four, so it was like I used to just get away with everything. Yeah, I kind of used to just rely sometimes on talent as such. Do you know what I mean? And then it was like, oh, actually, I, I need to top this up as well. Like, I always worked hard, but I feel like you I started getting a little bit complacent, complacent because yeah. I, I, was, I just felt untouchable for a bit. Yeah, I'd not lost in about four or five years, and I just complacency it a little bit, and then it was like. That kind of gave me a switch, yeah. but without the loss as such. I'll get ya. So get ya. I was lucky, really, but yeah. Not getting that luck. I'll get ya. I'll get ya. That's it. And then, because obviously after that, because I, again, I, yeah, we, I used to, tra- I, mean, I, I used to train a lot, obviously, up, up there, and I used to see you a lot, obviously, there. But then when I stopped fighting, I stopped going. But I still followed you on your socials, and I seen that. That's what I remember when you you made a little switch because then you started working a lot with the likes of Steve, the likes of Nat, and like you know you really. One minute I think one day when I was like really surprised because you weren't doing one for like running or anything, but you were there doing hill sprints at one stage as so well. I was like you know, so it's good to see that obviously the shift and that little wake up call that you got. And then that also changed, obviously, in the way you, like, it's not about always how you look, but even your physique changed Massive from that point. Look. Do you know what I mean? Cause Massive. Someone from... once sent me a photo where it was like, five years ago now, and it was like, changing, don't get me wrong, Massive. obviously. Yeah. Me getting older is going to change it anyway. Course, but course. like, if you look at it, it'll be like, You never had abs. Wow. I well, wonder, mental, I, uh, you never had abs had like a bo- for... body of a bag of soup yeah literally i remember <laughs> you never having yes. abs and then all of a sudden seeing you on social media i was like fucking hell yeah, like, yeah, yeah. that's when i was like oh shit but everyone who knows me knows i hate weights i hate it i Boring. hate it like oh hate it like they hurt yeah i hate all freaking calluses sort of stuff i hate that it's boring yeah, I'd rather just hit pads all day, but obviously it's, it's got to be done. Yeah, sport, you need, it? especially the way the sport's evolving now. Yeah. Everyone's now shifting. Like I remember, like, and you'll you'll remember this as well. Obviously, growing up in the sport, because it's all you've ever known. But training for a tie fight just used to be hit pads, hit pads, spa, spa, and that's all it. We used and to clinch, do. clinch, forty five. Like you know, that's all it was. The, and long distance running, just every morning, run, 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 and then just pads and and sparring away you go. But now, like with the likes of one championship, the likes of now even the Hitman League, the MTG, you know, all this like all these big promoters out there now, and the cha- the opportunities that fighters are getting now is is you can't you can't slack on it no, now. Does that can't. make sense? You can't. You get found out too quick. Too quick. There's too much. There's too many eyes now on the sport. Do you think it's getting a bit like uh, MMA now as well with the sport? And what I mean by that, what I'm what I mean by that is is. For example, you grew up in it. You can have fifty losses. Who gives a? But you could have a hundred wins and such. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, like you know, because obviously the wins are overtaken and whatnot. But it's like now everyone's getting. Oh, you can't have a loss. You can't have a loss. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. It's gonna ruin the reputation. Oh no, you won't get matched mm. on the next card. And I, stuff. It depends. I mean, I think if you're fighting more Western, mm. then yeah, I do think it is like that. Yeah. However, if you. I feel like they, them boys who are in Thailand and stuff like that, it kind of gets forgotten about. Yeah. Fights fight. I don't think they fight every really weekend. matter, does yeah. it? Over here now, I do think, obviously with the MMA, with the boxing and stuff like that, I do think losses are seen yeah. like a lot more as such, like as a bit of a negative. Yeah, massively. Do you massively. Know what I mean? But it's one of them, it's, we're still in one of them sports where you have hundreds of fights. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I've had 40, 
40 pro fights now. I'm only 25 years old. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah, like, it's way too another 10 years. It'd be fucking... <laughs> do you know what I mean? But it's, yeah. it, it, it's one of them. It's... I think once you start hitting the higher amounts of fights, then you're like, fair play losses don't matter. But yeah. these, especially the ones that we're only breaking into it, yeah, I feel like losses have highlighted a little bit more. As such, it's massively, you know I mean. yeah. I've, I've I've seen it with like, I see it here in in our place as well. Like, if if someone's to lose, it's like man, they, they it's like the life depended on it. Oh, mine's like that. to be fair though. Yeah. I'm, I'm like that. Yeah, it's weird. Do you know what it is though? Like, I'm not scared of getting hurt or all like that. Like, scared of losing and embarrassing myself to my mates. It's so so weird. Obviously, with me being a big ticket seller and stuff like that. Yeah. I don't want to let people down. Of course. I've so. seen how it affects people. It's like, for example, that one in Germany. Yeah. Fourth at world title, everyone came out. I sold like 70 odd tickets in Germany. Fucking hell. People all come out, everyone were gutted. And I thought, oh, I've ruined the weekend. It was so, so weird. It was like, but yeah. it, you know what I mean? I that, feel like it depends on it a bit. As in, if you look at my last one, the amount of people who come out, yeah. everyone were buzzing for weeks and like messing up. and still buzzing still buzzing it's weird it's, it's no. so so weird but I feel like it's it's, part that's part of the sport it's part of the sport, sport, sport isn't it? and what like obviously linked with that like obviously you're fighting three rounders what what do you prefer like obviously you've you've done the whole you've done the whole five threes you've done the three you know you've done your three I rounders I prefer fives me you've, easy only like, reason being like I didn't I'm not so much now but I used to be a little bit of a slow starter. Yeah. Now I choose my fives before I'm a slow starter or not. <laughs> it's weird. I, I don't know. Really, sometimes I start absolutely lightning. Sometimes I start a bit yeah. slow. Um, but I prefer five. Five. Just because, as well, even if I don't start slow, I always up, 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 up. Yeah. So it's... I, I always warm into a fight as such. I, sometimes I feel like three rounds, you can't really work someone out as such. Yeah. By round three, you, you well, before round three, but usually by round three, you've got you've clicked. Figured, you kind of figured it That's out. That's when you can it? really get a fight going. But yeah. sometimes with these three rounders, you're kind of hoping you need your distance from round one. Because if you don't have your distance, yeah. do you know what I mean? You can be knackered. You might lose first two rounds and then start warming into do round you, three. Do you, do you have a choice of it now or not? Or is it just whatever the promoter says? Really, it's whatever promoter says, but I'm lucky because obviously this next one's for a world title, so it's five rounds. But beautiful. That last one was five rounds as well, but so I kind of get a choice to yeah. an extent, especially with me being a big ticket seller and stuff like that. Cause it means promoters want you. Yeah. So you can kind of make your little demands as such, be a bit of a diva, but no, but that's part of it. It's one of them. Parts. Like if a lot of my friends like to see wars as such and yeah. you get more wars in five rounders so 100 percent. yeah yeah no i agree i agree I, I i i like in all fairness i like the both from an entertain from a from a fan point of view the three rounders are a bit more entertaining well my last five, few fights i've made it past three rounds yeah, anyway there you, there you go my there last you go. five fights i've gone past three rounds <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's, it's it's cool man it's, it's a lot more uh, it's, a, it's a lot more Faster pace. I think mm. we, I was I was explaining this to we were having a chat with Liam when he was last down and Andy and Steve on the last podcast. But from people that understand tire boxing have been brought up with it, we like our old school tradition. Yeah, of course. And we love we love all that. But the people because tire boxing isn't as popular as say boxing or MMA. A, pe a lot of people don't understand it still. They don't understand the scoring. It's confusing and blah, yeah. Blah, so blah, they blah, just blah. want to see a scrap. So the three rounders, I think, fits in oh, well, well, just to get the the sport more popular and for people to yeah, understand it more. Um, I I think it's, I think it's a, it's a good shout. And I like the, I like the fact that now it's a it's a bit of a I wouldn't say a mix, but it's almost like you get some shows that okay, yeah, this one's going to be three rounders, that one's going to be five rounds. That one's There's so many variables yeah. as well, even the music. Yeah. Some shows have music, some shows don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. Some shows do some shows do Y Cruise, some shows don't. It's I think realistically if, if this sport is gonna take off, they need to strip a lot of it. Yeah. Three rounds is all five like like um, MMA. Yeah. That's title it. fights five, five rounders, rounds. if not three rounders. Get rid of the music. Because that's put that puts a lot of people off. Yeah. I've had loads of my mates oh man, that music's doing me I didn't. 
I understand it. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Like from Thai, from Thai from fighters' point cult, of view, obviously it's tradition. Of, and yeah. It's weird. You get like timing off it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I kind of get used to that beat of it yeah. as such, boom, but boom, boom, boom. I, it's a, it's a pain in the ass. Yeah. I hate watching Thai boxing. I hate <laughs> it. I hate watching MMA. I hate watching Thai boxing. Only one I watch, really watch is boxing. Oh, serious? Yeah, I hate it. Drives me insane. How come? I don't know they, think, whether it's because I've been involved in it for so long. I'm at fights every other yeah. week. I, just, I get bored. Don't get me wrong. I watch I watch my mates fight. Yeah, you were at the UFC on um, Saturday. But even then, I didn't want to go. I only, <laughs> I only went because Molly and that were fighting. I'm friends with Molly, so yeah, I wanted yeah, to go yeah. see him. But like, I, just, I don't enjoy watching. I don't enjoy it. I don't watch him in I don't like watching it. I don't like watching Ty. I don't like watching Hulk. Fucking hell. I'd rather, watch, I'd rather watch football every week. Yeah, I see. <laughs> Not <weird. laughs> fair enough, fair enough. How's Molly doing, man? Because that was uh, yeah, good. she's all right now. Good. She'll be back from it. Oh, hundred percent. It's one of them. Which, obviously, because you got you you were with her after, weren't you? She's yeah, in yeah. A sling. She didn't oh, break we'll, it, did we'll she? Partying. No, I don't think so. She's in a sling, but no, I don't think it's broke. I don't understand why they didn't. Why that didn't break up straight away? Yeah. She tapped about fifty million times. Not so much. Do you know what I mean? And let that carry on. I was wild surprised watching that. I'll just, but anyway, mm. shoot her own. But yeah, she'll be back. She'll be back. But Shout out to she her. Went, she went good spirits after when I was getting karaoke going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's on it. <laughs> oh, well, I had to make karaoke, but I didn't have no microphone or music. So we'll just, just doing back, your... give me a song. Go. Go. A cappella. Fair play, fair play. No, no, no. Going, ball, going back to it, I didn't know, if, I didn't know that you're not... A, a fan of obviously this, you are a fan of the sport, but you just hate watching it. But yeah, no. But going back to what we were saying, like yeah, I agree with you. Strip, strip the music, strip the what mm. with the wide crews and just well, like fight, just and just treat it. I think that's how one is going anyway. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's pretty much. It was pretty much. Yeah, it's I getting think, there. I think, and I think some shows now need to get like that here in the UK. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, I think some are doing it, but and then and then the ones that are hardcore Muay Thai fans and they want the old music the whole tradition the whole white crew yeah, then so then fight. then you then you can do it yeah and no, i agree what what what's your obviously we all know what your end goal is going to be but are you looking to get into one soon 100 percent. yeah is there any is there any is there, I'm, is there I'm any a bit hints? of a sticky one because i feel like the weight's a bit of an issue what do you mean because obviously it's hydrated yeah so uh, 70 hydrated is that's what i mean i mean a bit of a stuck in the because yeah. i'm not big anyway so for 72, I'm not really big. Yeah. As in, if I were to fight at 70, I don't think I'd make it hydrated. Shit, yeah. 77, them boys are massive. Yeah. Imagine me stood next to Nicky Olskin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly, and I'd be like, the, out with the, him, the, mate. The, the back would be like that. Do you know what I mean? And obviously, I'm, I'm only five foot ten. Do you know what I mean? So I do, don't get me wrong, at 72, I'd like to say I'm one mm. of the top boys. I just think the 70 to 77 jump it's is too huge. Big. It's too big. I think they won't need one in the middle. Because none of other weights seem to do that. Well, what they're doing now, um, I don't know if they're introducing it in one, but what they're starting to introduce now in, a, in MMA and here in the UK and the States is you've got the lightweight, which is 70. You've got welterweight, which is 77. But now they've introduced the super lightweight, which is now, um, the super welterweight, sorry, shall I say, or super lightweight is called, but that's at 74. Yes, yeah, see, that's, that's, that's what halfway. I think need. Yes. Uh, well, that's, that's what I think it should be. Yeah. I get it to a point where people say there's no, there's too many weights in like boxing and stuff like that. I get that because obviously, it's, what is it, every two kilo? It's every, yeah, to every two or three kilo. Yeah, boxing, that's what yeah. I mean. So it's like, I get it, but a seven kilo jump is it? It's, it's huge. huge. It's a massive difference. I've, I've, it's I've, over a stone. I've, yeah. Massive. It's stupid. I've done it. I fought at seventy seven and I was like it's I was I, I looked like a little kid stood next to the guy. Is Alistair I, mean? I fought a guy called Alistair and at seventy seven like when I remember when at the weigh in it didn't look so bad. It was actually on the it's stair. When, yeah, it was yeah, when yeah. you're in the obviously fight. them boys are coming down from heavy. Yeah. So So by the time they've refueled Man, it looked the big. I, yeah, it was a complete it was the, I've only ever done it once. Never again. <laughs> Never again, because I was I was similar to you, because I was like I can't do this whole weight cutting thing. I can't mm. like this is obviously back in the day. Now I just stuck at seventy and then sixty eight. I remember getting sixty eight and sixty seven, and that was just disgusting. I was like, it's awful, isn't it? Yeah, I couldn't. And then but we, I we obviously we all, even back then, I feel like everyone just wanted to be lighter. Yeah, I feel lighter you are, you more, more advantage because you knew you bounced on some range. The talk, yeah. But yeah, I feel like 
at the minute, I, sp I think definitely working with Pete and stuff like that, I feel like I've found probably my optimal weight because obviously we do the tests and stuff like that, so we yeah. know what I can rehydrate to and stuff like that and what I'll be best I at. I want to ask you this. What, on your blog, what was that thing he was doing there, which you had a mask on or something, so that, and you were lying down? What's that? That, that tests your RMR, so your resting metabolic rate. Right. So that tells you just how many calories you burn at rest. So I'd say if I was just lay in bed all day, they'd know just how many calories I'd burned. Just by then? Just by doing that, wow. without having to do all. So I'd know. So for example, if I, could, if I ate the exact same amount of calories what my RMR were, I wouldn't put on any weight. Do you know what I mean? Okay. So then it it gives you a bit of a gauge on how many calories you can intake and stuff like that. So. Yeah. No, that's cool, man. So yeah, you've been decent. working a lot with them, obviously, to obviously get... Chain, it's totally changed. Game changer. Like, massive. massive. Yeah, massive. It's just... It makes everything a lot easier because you don't... Like I say, it don't, it don't become a fat camp, man. Yeah. It's a fight camp. So it, that you can kind of just so forget what, about. So... So just talk through, uh, talk through one of your camps now, just any camp, not, but in terms of weight point of view, because obviously before you used to always be fan camps, but now are you going into camp on, not on weight, but on what you're wanting to do? Well, I'm a little bit over it, man. <laughs> yeah. But um, like obviously I'm, I'm miles away from fight now, so I'm, yeah, like yeah, I say, yeah. for this one, I'm going to start a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. So by the time it does come to ramping it up, I'm already... It's not and when fight. you talk ramping it up, you're talking six weeks before, four weeks before, three weeks? Depends. You know what? I like eight weeks sometimes. You're an eight-week guy, yeah. Six, eight. You know, I like a little bit long because I, I like to be peak. So, like, we, another thing we did with peak, like, we did VO2 max and stuff like that. Wicked. And I got 72, I think it was, which is, like, high for, like, wow. VO2 max results. So, yeah, stuff like that. Like, even that sort of, like, I like to be peak when it yeah. comes to fighting, so, but it's one of them. I understand people doing even four weeks. Yeah. I understand people doing less because when you train non-stop well, and, you're like, and you live it, yeah. you don't really need to you do it I was such. just about to say this because I, I've known people that take, full, I don't know if they do it anymore, but I know people that take full on breaks in between fights mm. and I was like, you're not progressing at all. You're not improving at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? But then I, and then they go into like 12 week camps and I just think that's way too long. Yeah, I'd too be, long. Do you know what I mean? Because like, you start you to burn out. You don't like to, yeah, exactly. You don't enjoy it. Yeah, you burn out. And I just think, I think if you can just tick over in between camps, you don't need to go as intensely hard, mm. but that's where all the, all the new stuff comes into play is like you go, I don't know, if you go to Thailand, you learn some new tricks and something that you can just practice in between camps. And yeah, when 100%. it comes to camp, pull it off. Does Exa that well, that's, for example, yesterday. Yeah. Obviously, I'm not in any sort of camp as such now. Still get some, like, good sparring and stuff like that. There's a, kid, a, a new kid called Zomba who was coming to join our gym. Oh, wicked. 18 years old, 90 fights in Thailand. He's lived in Thailand for the past seven years. Guys, the kid's an absolute English joke. guy? No, no he's um, hungry. Okay. Um, his trainer is man up. We used to be Sanchez trainer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. But he's coming to university in England, so he's going to be training out of our gym, I think. Wicked. Um, but even like yesterday, just like play sparring all day. We got must have got twelve rounds and maybe more. Wow. But the amount of stuff like with even though just being play, just try random like little stuff. Yeah. But yeah, the kid is sick. Like keep an eye out for him. It's, it's really Zombies. good. And when he comes over. Like I said, we're going to get him some fights and stuff over here. So, yeah, I think he'll be That'd making be a bit insane. of a statement in UK scene. That'd be insane. Yeah, he's good. Wow. He's very good. Get him on the hit, man. Yeah, he, oh, that's the plan, that's yeah, the, yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah, Wish that's the it. plan, yeah. So, he's good. like I said, really good. 18-year-old, 90 fights. He's class. Absolutely. All in Thailand as well. Oh, he's lived man. in Thailand for the past seven years, so. Just doing Thai? Yeah, yeah. So, he's, he, like I said, he's good. And uh, he's coming over to England to do his university. Wow, fair play. So, fair play. Fair man. play, man. I'm, I'm excited to hear about that. Yeah, That's, good kid. Yeah, 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 definitely. So, obviously, we just discussed about your, obviously your last camp and everything, but more importantly, your camp before that and the fight before that, because we are just talking about how, obviously, a lot of people, losses affect them differently, mentally, physically, and everything, but... When I obviously I I didn't come out to Germany to watch it obviously but I was I was keeping an eye on, on it through social media, and one big up respect to you for just the way you handled it. I don't know how it was behind the scenes because obviously I wasn't there, but just the way you just came out on social media. Yep, shit happens. 
it's one of them. This is well, one of them things. That's, to and be honest, I think that's why I wanted to get back to drawing by a quick time. Yeah, because I thought I, I hate losing anything. Monopoly, I'm winning. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I hate losing, so like, with it happening, plus it's kind of like being my dream as such as a, since I was a kid to be a world champion. Yeah. I've beat world champions, you know what I mean? So it's like, obviously I've been UK number one for that long now. It's like, yeah, I feel like a, it's time. Yeah, it's time. I fought that many like high level people. Real, realistically, I should yeah. be there, but obviously I just don't have the time yet. So, um, did you know a lot about this guy that you are going in with? Thiago, yeah, yeah. yeah so he's, I, I, weirdly enough, the camp I were at in Thailand, where I did yeah, the camp, so, uh, that's I trained what... at Simba. A few little lads had like trained with Tiago a lot as well. Okay. So we knew exactly what we were about. He's a he's a big puncher, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's weird, like I actually felt pretty comfortable in the fight. I felt like I was winning. We all said before, always got his left hook, always got his left hook. So we were aware of it. What did he catch me with? Fucking left hook. I thought, oh, oh my god. Um it's just one of them. I think sometimes you can be a bit too aware, but yeah, it's it. I mean, it's it's one of them hard puncher, fair play. One he, he, he caught me, and got you. Game up. I, I mean, he caught me, dropped me, and then I just start. I went into that bit of a fight off light mode, then and just started swinging dinner. Yeah, yeah. And I actually yeah. started coming back, but obviously I was still unaware. And that's when elbow. Were you fully me. with it? No, we're gone. Because like that's that's like yeah, yeah, yeah. we're gone. So well, we. I don't remember. It can, you, can you remember throwing? I remember throwing, but like. I don't remember it getting stopped. So I was like, I went back to Richard and I went, What's that? I get dropped then or what? What, what, what happened? Yeah. Fruit towel mate. But why? Oh, went, Richard Fruit Towel. Yeah. Fruit yeah, Towel. Because yeah, yeah. basically, I got dropped off the elbow, made the count, stood back up, but I was gone. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. Like I said, I don't even remember going down. I was out, out. Like, if you watch it back, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. How I got to my feet, I do not know. Like, he hit me with a well, solid, like, like full on jump, boom. Well, and I went down, like, honestly, like a sack of bricks. So it was like, yeah. what on earth, man? But getting back, and then it was weird, you know, because like, <laughs> I was definitely concussed. But I was like, arguing that work concussed. I don't know what wrote me. Um, and I said, well, like, we need you to see a medic. So medics and coming. I'm going, oh, absolutely fine. And then they're like asking me all these questions. And then one of them went, who's the president of the United Kingdom? I went, president? I went, we've got prime minister, what are you on about, mate? And I said, I'm out of here. Strip my kit off and jumped in the shower. Everyone's in room. Oh, I fucking thought, hell. Yeah, mate, I was doing some wild stuff. And like, it was weird. I got home. Back to, when I got back to England the next day, I felt like even my PTs and stuff were saying to me, they were like, you know yourself feel like? You sound a bit drunk. Yeah, I think I was punch drunk for like a good two week. It honestly Slur, was weird. Slurring your words and everything. Yeah, yeah, it was weird. Shit, like I worked fully sharp at all for a while. So, did you get like any scans done or anything? No, nothing. I should have done. You sh- yeah, but, man. Yeah, yeah, no. But Fuck you know. And it, you do dumb shit, don't you, when you're young? Yeah, true, 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 man. It's so true. Like honestly, I remember seeing some, one of my is actually Jordan. And shout out to you, Jordan. But we, I was in camp. I can't remember what it was. One of my camps, and I remember going in in, in the ring upstairs, and I was I, I let my right hand drop, and he's caught me with his head. You, oh, it, was, <laughs> it was supposed to be head quick, but you know when it catches it there. I just remember, I just I don't remember anything after that, and I was I said it on the podcast previous. I don't remember anything up until I got back to Coventry. Oh really? So I don't know. I still still to this. Back? I drove, but I still okay. don't know how I drove. So I could have been, I could have anything. Like I don't remember anything from the Classic moment that Watson. the moment that landed to I think I was, I think I pulled up on my drive and I was like, and then it, like all of a sudden I woke up, back to you. and I was like, fucking, I don't. It's, I still to this day, this was what about ten years ago, but still to this day, I still don't know. Like that part of my life, that I still life. can't get yeah, back yeah, to. Yeah. It's weird, man. That freaked me out. And it's ever awful. Since, it's awful weird. Feeling. And I still thought like <laughs> two weeks after that. It's yeah, like, that's what I mean. It's kind of stuff we did though, isn't it? Yeah, it's mad. I still, it's crazy, crazy, crazy. Mm. But yeah, man. So obviously you got Wakelin in the uh, 18th of November. Uh, that'll be your last one for the year? 
I think so, but you I never, never said at the beginning. Yeah, I wanted four this year. Ah, okay. so that, I think it probably will be. Yeah. It'll be November. Yeah. Then the lead on, up, it, lead up. Realistically, if I'm to fight again, it's gonna be Christmas. Cri- isn't it? Yeah. So I think it probably will be. And but uh, would you be going to Thailand for this camp as well, or not? No, or I'm not? gonna do it all in UK you, for this. Yeah, wicked. So what was the camp like in Thailand? Because I was, I was like, some of the some of the stuff was insane, man. Yeah. <laughs> like I was watching you. Not saying I've never seen you get ragged around like in clinch before or anything, but fuck it, it looked like oh, these man. guys are half your size and they're just it's cookie. He's an absolute animal, these, man. man. So. Obviously, like, Cookie's a good friend of mine as well. Yeah. So, it was, like, I loved it training out there. Cookie's unbelievable on pads. And, like, it made it fun as well. Yeah. So, it was, like, I could enjoy people seeing all videos and stuff like that and that pillock throwing me around and all that sort of stuff. But I had a laugh out there. Yeah. And when I'm enjoying my training, that's when I probably when I train my best. So, you want to do more, in it? Oh, mate. They're so strong. Them tires are just so so strong, and obviously the most of them are lighter than me. Yeah. Oh my God, my neck. So we're going to ice baths every single day, and frigging. Ma- Luckily, obviously, we being in Thailand, you can just go ice bath, massage, do what you want. But yeah, obviously over here, we're not but, frigging. We can't just do that straight away. Nah, nah. So, but yeah, I, I did. I do. I did enjoy it, and I benefited from it a lot. Hundred percent. And what's the plans for next year? Then, would you like? Is there is there any anything that you're I know, obviously, at the beginning of the series, you said you wanted four. Still could possibly happen. Yeah, possible. If you used to do a late one, not a late one, but one close to Christmas. But what's the target? What's the goal set for next year? Keep, I just want to keep fighting, like, big names. Yeah. Obviously, everyone knows that I've fought huge names in past anyway. And continue, still keep continue doing continue it. Yeah, still keep doing names. it. So I think that's just the plan. Keep yeah. fighting the big names. Keep getting the big fights. For example, Wakeland, the amount of attention what, what that fight's already drawn. Do you know would what I mean? You, so I want to keep doing them sort of fights. Would you consider, obviously, with, with the end goal being one, would you consider in between your camps doing these like little tests, hydration tests and stuff like that, seeing if you can Possibly, do it? Possibly, yeah. yeah. Rather than do you know what? It. I've never actually thought about doing it. Yeah. So it, it that could be an idea. For just do it in between one of you. Up, you know, yeah. Maybe if you're not having a fight after after November, mm. get your November fight done, win, have a bit of a brew. And then, and then do then, like a bit of a mini mini camp mini before Christmas camp, do you know yeah, what I mean yeah. and then at least you got uh, some sort of idea Bit of a goal like we used well. to do that there's something that we used to do years ago but um, we like when I was considering cutting to a lower weight I'll do a little Bit of a fake, tester. fake camp. The thing is, I hate making weight. I know mate means I, I, did, so I, I did it here it. I did it here I did a little fake camp well not fake camp but I did a cut to is when I was considering dropping to 66 and I did it and then literally hydrated and then the following day we did like a hard spa in there um of five rounds and seeing if i still had it in me and then by round i remember feel. round three i just Duff. by ra- round three i just fatigue like yeah, you know when you yeah, feel yeah. like you you know when you see your fuel gauge go like this yeah, yeah, yeah that's how if you if you watch me it's like round three, i was like round one and two i was like oh my fucking i feel powerful because i'm naturally bigger than, yeah, these, a lot bigger than these people yeah and then round three four they're just talking about like, yeah. i was like i'm I had nothing in me and I was just like, damn. That's when I just stayed, that's when I made the decision just to stick at 70 mm. for me personally. That's that it. It's an interesting test. It's just, it's one of them making the weight, in it? But, no, weight I could hate hurt, making man. weights, man. But yeah, it's one of them, man. It's, 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 it's part and parcel of the sport, mm, but 100%. I wish it's more like boxing where you can have it. Not saying, you know, like some boxers where they just, they're always in. I feel like boxers just walk around them work. They it's do. weird, yeah. It's you you hang you got a lot of mates that are in, in that. Yeah, period. that's what I mean. Yeah, a lot of them, they, they all just they're very close. I feel it's like it's very MMA keepers. and Thai. We all seem to do these big cuts stupid, as in boxes cuts. are just constantly. Yeah. Like they'll only cut like three, four kilos. Piece of piss. Literally. And they'll so, only they'll only skip a meal by doing it. Do you mm. get what I mean to make weight? And it's like and they watch it like I remember when one of my boxing coaches like when He'll be watching me cut weight. He's like, "What are you fucking doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you doing? Well, it's extreme what we do. It's ridiculous. It's stupid. It's stupid. But hopefully it changes. Hopefully there's more weight categories added in. That's do you it. know what I mean? And then go from there. Um, but I want to obviously touch base with you about. Uh, we all know how you started, but like, what? When was it that you made that decision about? 
this is what I want to do as a as a as a career as a profession because literally you eat live eat live and breathe more yeah. now. It, it's not you know as if is? you've got a no. It's not as if you've got a job out, out outside of Thai boxing. No, yeah, Everything's yeah. involved. Everything. In it. Yes. It, it's a bit of a weird one, like because you started what four four year old. Yeah, yeah. So like. Obviously, my first proper like pro fight were 15. Not when you're yeah. when Liam fought Benue. Yes, I remember. I was still at a different gym. Oh, were you? Yeah, you were yeah, so I, 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 I were at Cold Atai. So I were there from oh, yeah, yeah. four till 15. Um, Cold Atai, where's that? Is that? That's in Halifax, it... yeah, yeah. Okay. So I were training there. Not Brian were... Cold. No, 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 no. that's Scotland, that. But yeah. I were training there and then I were topping up and doing. Remember Master A? Yeah. So I was training at Master A's as well. Oh, wicked. Yeah, so I were there from like four till 15, and then at 15, I just thought, like, right. Because mm. I was kind of like a bit of a top, I was like the top boy in the gym. Yeah. yeah. And that, I didn't really think I should have been at that age as yeah. such, you know what I mean? If I want to, to progress, I've got to be around better people. 100%. So that's when we moved to Bagco. Um, it's like, I remember my first ever sparring session. Do you remember George Berry? Yeah. I were a bit of a cocky, obviously I come from juniors and stuff like that. I went for like a right leg, left leg, right leg, like leg kick thing. I did one right leg and he teed me on my ass immediately. I thought, you know, a bit, bit better here. Shit. Oh, George battered me. But like, it was just different. Yeah. It was just, back, um, back then as well, they were like, George, you used to come up. Mm -hmm. Imran Khan. Yeah. Luke Turner. Yeah. Luke Emerson. Connor Coolican, Liam, Molida, Badger, Darren O'Connor, you like, yeah. we just it were relentless. I remember oh, Davy Mack. Yeah. We just not it were non stop. So it was like I thought this is that's where it kinda like pulled me up as such. Yeah. And that's I, I probably learnt most of getting battered off these people. Yeah. But that's probably where I learnt most of my tri my, like, my tricks and stuff. Yeah. So I mean it's it's one of them but I think it was, I was, think I was 16, 17. I had a job at Cash and Carry. And Richard were like, I want you to like ramp up your training a bit. I'm like, yeah, but Richard, I need work as well. And he was like, well, why don't you do PTs here? And at first I was a bit like, I, I didn't know whether to or not because Liam did PTs, mm. Andy did PTs, Badger did PTs, you know what I mean? So it was a bit like, I didn't know if I'd get any clients. Yeah. So I kind of just did. I, I've volunteered, volunteered myself to do a kids class and I used to help with all kids class. I only used to PT kids. Okay. And then as I was getting older, so I went to university as well. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah. What so did I've, you got, I've got a degree in sports coaching. Oh, wicked. So, but obviously that's when I started like getting my name better as well in, in sport. In like sport. by 18 or UK number one. And then that's when like my PT business was, was that when you fought up. Ricky? Nah, so it was just after. Just after. I, I was 17 when I fought Ricky. Ah, oh, okay, okay. Um, when you had the cash in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good photo though, that, eh? That's a really good photo. That was a good photo, but funnily enough, it was the one when I, I beat Purda. Right. Because the number one was Ben Hodge. Okay. But he retired. Oh. So I beat Purda with UK number two, and I put me in UK number one. Wicked. So... It were, it, it were a decent one, and then like, I fought like, so, like Amari Deirdrick and stuff like that. Yeah. And they were like all big sort of names, but I fought like, like, so Brad, like Brad, when I was 17 and stuff like that, I fought like, so Brad, Brad Stanton and stuff like that. Already like well established, even Ricky. Yeah. yeah. Ricky was fighting Reggie Damn and stuff like that. Ricky was, like, yeah. Very good fighter. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it was one of them. Like, I, I think I got flown in at deep end quick, but. Massively, yeah. It, it probably benefited me in the long run. Definitely. Now nah, look at you. Do you got know what mm, I mean? 100%. So then how did you build up your PP? Like, so you're saying you obviously started with the kids. Yeah, and I think it was just... Well, obviously I kept winning fights and stuff like that. So I were getting a bit more, like, eyes on me that way. Yeah. And then because I was helping out with gym a lot more. And then it was just... Because people had seen my fights, stuff like that. Yeah. And I, I gained a bit more confidence through it as well. Because I think that that's a lot... Of, uh, that's a big thing. Especially yeah. at that age, it's like people get a bit panicky, especially when they're around adults. Like, I remember, like, 16, 17, 18 year old around adults, like, you feel it's a bit intimidated yeah. sometimes, but then it was like, I don't know, I'll tell you what to do. Yeah. Like, you can show people, and at the time, it's just like, 
Yeah. You're going to see a little bit of a shell as such, but I think confidence is massive. Like nice. that's one of the main things about teaching. Like I think you need to be a confident person. If, yeah. if not, you'd be ruined as a coach. Yeah. People walk over you, innit? Mm. Hundred percent. Like even just doing that degree and stuff, I learned so much I about like that. coaching. Yeah, 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 sports coaching leads back it. Wicked. So like, I only did that. Fighting ain't gonna last forever. True. Do you know what I mean? And if I ever touch wood, I don't ever get injured. Do you know what I mean? I don't. You know what I mean? If say if I did get injured, I don't want to. Yeah, have nothing. Have nothing to fall back on. Makes Do you know sense. what I mean? Or if I ever fall out of love sport. I had that bit of a burnout period before where I like I wanted to quit. Yeah. Covid probably saved my career because True. that bit of a that two year layoff. At the time, I, d I didn't want to train anymore. I didn't want to train. I, didn't yeah. I fought Nile Brown. I didn't even want to train. Fuck the yeah. only reason I ended up fighting was because I sold a lot of tickets. Yeah. I didn't know what else, and I just felt like I had to. I didn't want to let people down, but I didn't want. I didn't want to fight anymore. It was horrible. It probably the worst feeling I've ever felt. But you in my were life. so active before COVID. You were so, like literally so is like one after another after another. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I, I remember you being in, you having your fight, and then it's like okay, no, like not when I say normal people, but like they'll like have a bit of a break. I can get into it. You're straight in, straight, straight in. Straight like, I, like I still, I still remember the fight where you know where you put it on in, oh, Instagram. You, yeah, and you're there doing that, and then I swear to God, I think it was like two weeks after you're back into a camp again or something yeah, like that. Awful. It was like fucking hell, fair play. Oh, yeah, that was a bad time. Do you, do you know what I mean? it's like best fighter I've ever fought. Yeah, ever. Well, obviously, he's known for like a, a great. You know what I mean? Yeah. Probably best ever suit. 72.5 kilo fighter ever. Yeah. So, but I learned so much off that, that fight. Like, ridiculous, but. Wicked. Probably took it a little bit too no. early in my career. Do you know what I mean? I were only 20, 20, 20, my 21st birthday that week. Oh, wow. And then I was like, obviously going from, I'm fighting essentially a man. I'd not even fully developed yet as such, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, we're like, to be fighting someone, he'd had, figure out, we like, someone already have 280 fights or something like that. Fucking hell. Not even had 30 fights. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Fighting for WBC world title, it was just a bit early, a bit too yeah. soon, but it's one of them, I wouldn't change it. No, nah, no regrets. Learned no so regrets. much from it. Learned no so regrets. much from that fight. Wicked, man. That's awesome. And what's what's long term plans, obviously? You've got your fight career, which you're in the prime of it at the moment. You've got mm. all, obviously, everything going on. Uh, what's after that? What's after that? Not sure. Um, Open up your own gym, coaching? Possibly coaching or something like that. I think I'll always be involved with sport. Because I know a lot of fighters don't want to coach, man. So, yeah, yeah, a lot of people don't enjoy it. Yeah. Um, I enjoy coaching, I enjoy PT and stuff like that. But long term, I don't want to always be like holding pads and stuff. It takes it out with you sometimes. Yeah, um, it's hard. Funnily enough, I've got a website which dropping like three weeks. Okay. But it's not gonna be like Liam's website as such. It's okay. more one of my sponsors who are like a big like media marketing company. Okay. Decided to make me a, like a website as such. I can use that as I as I as want little. as such. So now it's just, for now it's just gonna be like fight a profile and nice. If people wanna get in contact with like PTs or sponsors or you know what I mean? Like if people wanna find out about yeah. my fights, my vlogs, all, Would you all do that tutorials sort of and stuff like that in there as well? Essentially I'm thinking thinking about it, but for now it's just like People need to find out about me. Yeah, find go, over there. Go on there. If they want to go on my socials, my YouTube, all the sponsors, the whole, whole lot, everything's on there. But I could use that in future, looking like so if if I grow my following like Liam's done or something like that. Yeah, use it. Look, look at what Liam's doing or Smashing do you know it. what I mean? Yeah. Do some what's going to make me rich. Yeah, because I want to become rich. Yeah, man, you'll do it. You'll do it because you're pointing in the graph now. I say it's mm. like I say it with Liam as well. Like he, he, uh, he's. I remember seeing that interview where he says he's obsessed with it, and you, yeah. you remind me of that. So I mean, you're yeah, obsessed. With, you're obsessed with the sport, but these people are fucking grafted for it yeah. to get to this stage. And you know what I mean? He's killing it. And you, you, and, Absolutely and killing and it. Yeah, and it now, you, know mean? you know what I mean? So and you've done the same. You fucking. You've gone through the grind. Your last camp. Going back to how we started the podcast. Your last camp proved it. You mm. went through fucking Hallam, Hell. <laughs> literally physically in the fight as well, but more so mentally outside of the fight and outside of the camp as well. You went through Hallam back because you're obsessed with the sport mm. to come back and fucking win the fight. Do you know what I mean? And yeah, come back with the vengeance and such. And it's, it's, it's good to see. And 
good things are only going to come back to you for it. Do you know what yes, I mean? It. Because it's like you put, you're planting the seeds now and then whenever you, 10, 20 years from now, you decide to obviously call it a day and hang up the gloves. That's it. Everything will then pay the price. And I've got, the thing is, I've got good people around me as well. Like, obviously, I'm surrounded by like, the likes in the gym, like yeah. Liam, Richard, and the them sort of people. But then away from like, like my sponsor, I'd say my sponsor, my, like the like, Dude, friends, and yeah. like, Jeff Shepard, people like that. Nice. He's been a bit of a mentor to like, right through life really like, yeah he, he honestly helps me so much Brilliant. so much he's been like a long long term i say a sponsor but he's, he's more of a friend but he's like yeah. he's helped me so much wicked like regarding fighting so having the right people around you and stuff like that massive putting yourself in right circles i think will help you massive long, long yeah. term no so. fair play i think it makes a massive difference and i always i always go by the saying that Surround yourself with the people you want to become type of 100%. thing. Yeah, and people that will uh, level you up, not the ones that are going to constantly bring you down. Do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? And the second you feel like that, you need to rubs pull away from it. Yeah, you need to pull away from it. Do you know what I mean? So no, Joe, yeah, man. man, I appreciate you taking the time out. Thank you so much, my brother. Appreciate yeah, you coming down. Legend. Thank you so much. Cheers Is there anything me, you want to shout out to sponsors or anything like that? You want to let everyone know? Even watch me YouTube's because I'm trying to make it grow. So Joe Craven, Badco, wherever I'm looking. I don't know where I'm looking. But anywhere, anywhere. Though. That's the only thing I want to grow. So click on that or follow me on Insta, Joe underscore Craven. Perfect. Thank you so much, Kevin. Respect, brother.